Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Monday. It is April 24th. And in case you're wondering, yes, there is a little buzz in the air still this morning. Whispers about Fiesta and all eyes on the forecast for tonight. I know some people a little worried, but as far as we know, the parades look good yeah. so far, yeah. you know, for the for the big parades and starting tonight, Texas Cavaliers River Parade. That's right. So we're going to give you kind of a bird's eye view of the San Antonio Riverwalk where this will be the uh, site for tonight for the Cavaliers River Parade and Justin Horn joins us now. We've had cloudy skies, a very cool morning. Mm -hmm. And did I hear you say in the newsroom we missed a record yesterday for the coolest high temperature by one degree? Oh, wow. Uh, just a few degrees, actually. Okay. Yeah, we, we reached a high right around midnight. But if you count just the daytime temperatures, it was super close. It was a cool day yesterday, uh, almost some record territory there. And we've been talking about how uh, with these rain chances, how we want to fit some of these Fiesta events in. I think this forecast is going to work out pretty well as we look at the long term. There are rain chances, but the way it times out at the moment, at least it looks pretty good. And speaking of the rain over the weekend, boy, was it nice to see since April 1st, 3.86 inches. That is 1.86 inches above average. When's the last time we could say that we were above average rainfall wise? Uh, that's good news. Uh, 7.03. Since January 1st, we're still a little, a little bit below average for the year, but not by much. So we're making up some of this ground. And as I said, there are more rain chances in the forecast. So let's go outside for you. Uh, we've got cloudy skies right now, but I do think we'll see a few peaks of sun later today. It's generally dry, so the Texas Cavaliers River Parade looks like we should be just fine tonight. There is a chance of showers and storms, though, that kick in tonight and into tomorrow. And we've got two fronts on the way, one Wednesday night and one Friday night. So there is a lot to talk about in the seven day forecast right now. 55. It's still cool out there with east northeasterly winds at about six miles per hour. Very quickly, let's look at today's forecast 57 at 11 o'clock. Uh, get a few peaks of sun by the afternoon. We'll top out right around 67 for a high and with the parade getting underway tonight. Temperatures will be in the low 60s and we'll be looking at mostly cloudy conditions. The rest of the week's forecast coming up in just a bit. We'll get over to Stephen now and check in on that morning commute. You know, Justin, I thought about wearing a turtleneck today, but none of it screamed Fiesta to me. So, uh, <laughs> you know, fair. this is what we settled with. But guys, unfortunately, there's nothing to celebrate over here off 35 northbound at Shirts Parkway. We do have a crash. It's causing some pretty big delays. Uh, I just checked the corner of my eye trans guide. It does look like things could be clearing, but notice that there's still a little bit of residual congestion in the area. 35 northbound. If you're heading out there, just be cautious as the commute does get rolling. But let's give you a wide look at the metropolitan area because a lot of things have dwindled down. We had plenty of that congestion taking over our map here, and you can see a lot of it is uh, just again just returned to green, which is what we like to see. But let's get a look at that shot from Transgat at 35, where we saw that cross reported a little bit earlier. Looks a lot better. Looks like it just cleared out, which is always great news. But the morning has been a little spotty. We've had some issues. They clear out, then another one pops up. So I'll continue to keep a close eye on the roadways. But as always, make sure you scan this QR code because that QR code takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. And any incident that does pop up, I'll be sure to let you know about it. But also keep in mind, there's still plenty of road work that is taking place. And a lot of that is taking us up to the early days of May. Yeah. It's going to be me, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later on at noon. So uh, for now, just drive safe. Thank you, Stephen. Let's look at today. The American Embassy in Sudan is now temporarily closed with no official American presence on the ground as a deadly conflict continues among two opposing military forces. The Biden administration says just under 100 American diplomats, embassy staff and their families were evacuated over the weekend, but more American citizens are still stuck in Sudan. The U.S. hit its debt ceiling in January, and since then, the Treasury Department has been keeping the nation afloat financially. Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he has enough support to get his debt limit legislation through the expected House vote this week. It includes a $1.5 trillion hike to the debt ceiling, but with cuts to domestic spending programs. Early voting begins today for the city's general elections. Voters in San Antonio will get to weigh in on who represents them and also vote on a hot issue, Proposition A. Early voting ends May 2nd. Election day is May 6th. You can find polling locations and more information on KSAT.com. Med Bath & Beyond is heading for bankruptcy. In a filing yesterday, the retailer says it will start winding down operations this week. Barring a sale of its businesses, the company says all 360 of its locations, along with its 120 Bye Bye Baby stores, will likely close by the end of June. 
GM is recalling over 40,000 of its Silverado pickups with a potential problem that could cause a fire. The recall affects several models made from 2019 on. The issue centers on a sensor that could leak brake fluid. It is more expensive to buy a new or used car these days, and a new report says that price increase has contributed greatly to inflation over the past couple of years. This all began during the pandemic. Some economists agree with the report, but others say it is unfair to blame just one sector of the economy for the rise in inflation. Layoffs on the way at Lyft. After his first week on the job, the new CEO told employees that a significant number would be let go. The Wall Street Journal says it could be more than a quarter of the ride-sharing company's 4,000-member workforce. More cities across the country are looking at housing as a way to save downtown areas. Several big cities, including New York, Washington, D.C., Seattle, and Pittsburgh, are seeing major work on converting unused office space to new apartments, and many cities are offering tax breaks to help drive the conversions along. Today, thousands of people will line the banks of the San Antonio River for the 78th Annual Texas Cavaliers River Parade. The parade will be shown from 7 to 9 p.m. live, and you can watch it right here on KSAT or any of our digital platforms. Viva Fiesta, and that's today's 9 at 9. And your morning headlines, possible interstellar answer to a weekend mystery in Indiana. And we remember dancing icon and personality Lynn Goodman. Plus a terrifying situation and an anxiety inducing video for homeowners in Utah. Max Massey joins us live in the studio with your morning headlines. Max, where are we starting today? Good morning, guys. So we're kind of starting in New York, but it's really a problem that we see everywhere. You remember the scooters that were a huge you know, craze a few years ago, pre pandemic, a whole nother world? Well, Pretty big problem because their batteries are catching fire. So technically it's poorly made lithium ion batteries and there has been a spike in fires. Some of those fires turning deadly. Now a high ranking U.S. Senator calling for a big change. So after dozens of fires just this year, five deaths, New York senators, they're now pushing for federal safety guidelines. So these would allow regulators to crack down on cheaper, low quality batteries. In New York City alone, where more workers, more delivery workers, they're using these e-bikes. Well, 216 battery fires were reported just last year. Now you compare that to 2020, there were only 40. So this fire safety video that you just saw on your screen, it shows how quickly a fire from an e-scooter can spread through a living room. But without federal legislation, since so many of these batteries come from cross state lines are made overseas or made in China, we will not have a complete and strong solution. Experts recommend only using a charger that comes with the device. Never charge the battery near any flammable material. And now, guys, some sad news this morning. We remember this man, Len Goodman, a long serving judge on Dancing with the Stars. He really helped revive interest in ballroom dancing on both sides of the Atlantic. He's passed away at the age of 78 years old. So his agent, Jackie Gill, said Goodman passed away peacefully Saturday night. Now he had been diagnosed with bone cancer. This former professional ballroom dancer and British champion, well, he was the head judge on Strictly Come Dancing for 12 years from its launch in BBC in 2004. The dance competition, which pairs celebrities with professional dance partners, it was a surprise hit, became one of the network's most popular shows. All right, now to just a terrifying situation if you're a homeowner. Not one dream home, but two dream homes collapsing and sliding down this hill. You can see it. It just went away. Terrifying situation. So that was the moment. This is the moment right here. This is the moment where two Draper City homes slid right off the ridge overnight. Neighbors capturing both homes collapsing after the foundation gave way. And we're getting a look at the aftermath. The home's debris falling hundreds of feet down the side of a mountain. It now just lays blocking a trail. So Carol and Eric, they moved into their perfect dream home, or at least they thought, at the end of 2021. Less than a year later, they were forced to evacuate. Looking at this now, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. I'm just feeling a lot of grief, remorse of, uh, of the things lost and um, hope now that it's over, we can move forward and find another dream. Yeah. Terrible situation. The good news is 
No physical injuries reported. So the investigation into what exactly happened and who could be responsible, that investigation is still ongoing. Draper City says their engineers are on the scene. They're trying to figure out what exactly caused the slide. Uh, trying to fill material that wasn't compacted correctly. They're also saying that it was possibly the recent moisture or just a combination of bad architectural issues could be to blame. All right, so this is really the, the talk of the morning. Some extraterrestrial news coming your way. A loud boom Friday night. Obviously, it concerned a lot of families in Indiana. They asked a lot of questions, and the answer might be in the form of a meteor. So the emergency management official said it was likely a sonic boom caused by a meteor, and it matches reports from pilots in Kentucky who said they saw the meteor to the north. The National Weather Service picked up something on its lightning detection system, and that same system has picked up meteorites in the past. All right, so that is the sound, sonic boom that a lot of neighbors heard. Obviously, if you're at home, guys, you hear that, you're a little curious, like, what is that explosion? So NASA says, because I was curious, we had to look this up, a meteor is technically a piece of space rock entering the Earth's atmosphere. The bright streak with the appearance of a shooting star, it's actually extremely hot air produced by this meteor. The rocks usually burn up in the Earth's atmosphere before reaching the ground, which is why a lot of people don't find meteorites hanging around. Right. No. They're burned up. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. That would definitely get your attention. I mean, rattle a few windows, shake a few oh, picture frames. Sure. Yes. And I'm sure there's some, you know, conspiracy theorists being like, is it really a meteor? Is it really? Mm. <laughs> The truth is out there somewhere, Max Massey. Thank you very much. Thank you. 909, 55 degrees. And Tiffany Huetos joins us now with a look at what she has coming up next. Good morning. What an exciting day. Take a look. Chairs are set for the annual 78th Texas Cavaliers River Parade. We're going to tell you about the barges this year's theme next. 913, welcome back at Viva Fiesta. The theme of this year's Texas Cavaliers River Parade is Fantastic Voyages, and it be worked into every float you see tonight. That's right. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the San Antonio River with a look at head to the 78th Annual Parade. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. What an incredible assignment. Last week, we showed you a smoke cannon. Today, we're here along the San Antonio River. We're here with my friend, Greg C. Good, Good morning. morning. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? Great. Thanks for taking us here. Um, tell us about this year's event. What should people expect? Well, we've got the 78th Annual Texas Cavaliers River Parade this year. Um, our theme is Fantastic Voyages. We're really excited to have everybody down here. We've got about 250,000 people that will be down watching the parade. Our guys have been working diligently over the past week, setting up over 19,000 chairs. Our Grand Marshal is uh, Brigadier General Charles Duke, who was Apollo 16, walked on the moon. So we're really excited about it and very fired up, ready for this to happen. And the weather is incredible today. We're seeing the chairs here. Everyone's really excited. The Texas Cavaliers, everyone's excited. We are, everybody's excited. Um, the chairs are out. The weather is great. We only have about a thousand tickets left. So if you would love to come to the parade, please go to our website, which is texascavaliers.org or call 210-22-RIVER. And again, let's talk about where this money is going to go to. So we support well over 60 children's charities all around uh, San Antonio and South Texas. And we've raised, uh, we'll be giving well uh, about two and a half million dollars away this year to children's charities. What does it mean for you to be involved with this? this oh, year? it's near and dear to my heart. You've got some of your best friends in the world down here working. Uh, we've got a couple of hundred volunteers with the Cavaliers working hard and doing, you know, putting in thousands of man hours. And it, it's just, it's just so great to be able to give back to the community and do everything that we do. Incredible. What are you looking forward to the most tonight? Um, having a great time and putting on a great, great party for the city. I'm so excited. This is going to be such a great event. We're going to have all our friends here from KSAT. And thank you for talking to us and doing all of this at the same time. Absolutely. I mean, it, it couldn't be for a better cause and it couldn't be for a better city to celebrate our history and our culture. So we're excited about it. So thank you. Awesome. What a fun event. We're going to send it back to you all. And what a cool story. Talking and driving at the same time. Yeah. Good job, Greg. All right, Tiffany, thank you. Well, if you can't make it out to the River Parade tonight, don't worry because you can watch it from the comfort of your own home. Yes, you can. We will be airing the Texas Cavaliers River Parade right here on KSET. David Sears and Myra Arthur will be hosting the broadcast. You can also watch it on any of our digital platforms. We will, of course, also be airing the Battle of Flowers Parade, which we're partial to Friday morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the Fiesta Flambeau Parade on Saturday night. So lots more to come. Big week here at KSAT, of course, for the city of San Antonio. Be safe.
and uh, we'll see you on the air. I have a feeling that what Tiffany has on, a flower mm -hmm. crown and, yeah. a, and a jacket, would yeah. be kind of the theme tonight. It's the uh, outfit du jour. Mm -hmm. yes. I was thinking back to, was it was a couple years ago when it, uh, it was in the summer, remember, because it was COVID. And oh, June. David yeah. Sears needed like uh, three wardrobe changes because oh, it was no. like 100 degrees. Yes. It will be the antithesis of that. It will yes. be cool and cloudy. So I think it works out well. A lot Good. of people will be down there enjoying it. Let's first start with the aquifer. I got to talk about this because the, the, the rains over the weekend and Friday, they were so good. They've bumped up the aquifer quite a bit. We're up six tenths of a foot today to 639.9. That's the 10 day average, but you can see we're jumping up here. And since Thursday, since Thursday, we've jumped up five feet. It has been a long, long time since we can say that about the aquifer. So uh, these recent rains have done a lot to help us not only uh, boost the aquifer, but just help things green up a little bit and help us uh, kind of scratch away at this drought. We're still in a drought, but uh, it helps. Definitely helps. 55 degrees right now. We've got cloudy skies. Dew point is at 50. East northeasterly winds at about six miles per hour. It's a cool morning. Yesterday was cool all day long. Today will be a little bit warmer, perhaps, but not by much. And I do think we'll see a few peaks of sun later this afternoon. Starting to see a few here and there. But you can see the cloud cover is expansive here uh, across uh, South Texas. And a lot of us are socked in with clouds at the moment. Uh, temperature wise, 55 again here, 53 Uvalde, 57 Del Rio, 50 in Rock Springs, 58 Kennedy, 57 in Victoria in Round Bear County. Generally mid 50s. We are up to 58 there at Stinson. 55 Canyon Lake, 57 right now for our friends up there in New Braunfels. Here's our KSAT 12 hour forecast. Maybe a little bit of drizzle this morning, otherwise just cloudy through noontime, 60. And then we'll call for a few breaks here and there by the afternoon, 67 at 4 o'clock, 67 at 5 p.m. And as we head into this evening, uh, during the Texas Cavaliers River Parade, we'll be in the low 60s, mostly cloudy. Really, again, you can't, you can't beat that weather. Uh, it'll be crowded down there tonight. Here's a look at our computer forecast here. And as we look forward to 4 o'clock today, again, nothing there. It's quiet. But things change tonight. We're going to start to see some drizzle developing, maybe some fog, and then some actual showers by tomorrow morning. So the morning commute tomorrow could be a little bit wet. I'll warn you there. And then by the afternoon, uh, a few more showers. And then we could start to see a few thunderstorms as we head into, say, 2, 3, 4 o'clock. We've bumped rain chances up to 40%. We'll have to watch for a couple strong ones, too, especially east of San Antonio, where conditions are just a little bit better for maybe a few severe thunderstorms that especially is the case as we head into this evening but at that point those storms are starting to push away from us and it clears out out west so that kind of jives with what the storm prediction center is thinking best opportunity for severe weather is new Braunfels, seguin gonzalez and points off to the northeast but even san antonio is in the isolated risk for some strong to severe storms tomorrow. So something we'll be watching for sure as things unfold into the afternoon. Then as we go long term here, I want to talk about this a little bit because we've got two fronts headed our way. One that arrives early, early on Thursday. And with that, we'll get a broken line of showers and storms, about a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain with that. And then it clears out Thursday. We get some great weather on Friday, but then Friday night we get another front that comes through. Broken line of showers and storms, about a 30% chance of rain there. And then it clears out as we head into Saturday. So let's talk about how that affects our Fiesta parades. Uh, we talked about the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. Looks good there. 70s, Battle of Flowers, Friday morning. Beautiful, cool start, mostly sunny. Then with that second front, We'll get clear skies, low humidity and temperatures in the 60s for Fiesta Flambeau. So guess what? This all works out. Really, it's pretty amazing. We get some rain chances there, but we work it around the parades, which is always good. So 83 Wednesday, the front comes through 40% chance of storms. And then 79 Thursday, 84 Friday, with uh, mostly clear skies until Friday night when that next front comes through. Small chance of storms there and then clearing out for Saturday and Sunday. And temperatures... Don't get too out of control there. So this is uh, this is not a bad forecast. Not bad overall. The big parades seem to be good. Yes, they do. And most of our rain chances are kind of other than tomorrow are overnight. So that helps. may work out well. That helps. Yeah. All right. Mother Nature got with the program. Yes, yeah. she did. After last week, what a yeah. mess. 920, 56 degrees. And coming up next, we are getting an inside look at the San Antonio Police Department's new drone unit. Our Max Nazi shows us how police are using them and where you could see them soon.
your 2023 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. I am Wendy Araujo, and I am this year's Miss San Antonio. Meet Wendy Araujo, the 100th Miss San Antonio. Wendy is a junior at Texas State. She's studying dance education, and most notably, she's a community service advocate. Hi, good afternoon. I think it's so important that from a community basis, we give back to those who have given us that support we've had from, from a young adolescent to early adult to even senior citizens. It's so rewarding when you go out into the community. Raised in Dallas and living in San Marcos, it was San Antonio that long captured the heart of the Royal Queen. She's out in the community often, catching up with not only the locals, but also with visitors from afar looking to get a taste of the Alamo City. Being Hispanic, I just get a sense of home here. I found my sense of home and purpose here in this community and you know, going around and visiting people and getting to know their walks of life and their stories. The Miss San Antonio program is an extension of the Miss America organization. Wendy is part of a select group of women in Texas and the U.S. who serve as ambassadors of advocacy, community service, education, mental health awareness, and most notably for Wendy, female empowerment. We prepare women for great world and then the world is prepared for great women. And so we are also women who can. And I'd like to also add women who will and women who do. When Miss San Antonio is not out in the community, Wendy sets aside her crown for her dance shoes, a member of the renowned Texas State Dance Division. Wendy is ready for all the fiesta festivities, but she never loses sight of the true meaning of her role as Miss San Antonio. This title, not only, it doesn't say my name, it says San Antonio. So learning the fact of what I can do in this community and how it's impacted people, I just want to make sure I can give back as much as I can. And being that 100th Miss San Antonio is just all in itself a very honorable thing. And I am so honored that I can represent San Antonio in the best to my ability. Hope you're enjoying those Fiesta vignettes. Welcome back 926. New technology is seemingly getting integrated into so much of our day to day lives. Now San Antonio police have their very own drone unit. Max Massey met with the unit and gives us an inside look at the need for drones, the uses and how you might see them at your favorite Fiesta events this week. Small handheld technology. Fast maneuverable devices. This is the new SAPD drone fleet. Chief McManus wanted to leverage technology to enhance public safety. About 2018, uh, I was asked to start looking at creating, the, using drones, augmenting the uh, helicopter unit. Sergeant Daniel Anders heads the squad. He tells me there's a variety of uses ranging from hostage situations to even investigations. Anything you can think of for public safety. Overwatch for large crowds, fire uh, support for the fire department. Um, we use mapping to re uh, collect evidence and outdoor crime scenes. And then we have indoor drones for tactical situations. Already drones like this, well, they're getting 350 calls a month, supporting officers out in the field. And it takes a lot of prep to stay ready. All of our pilots have to have an FAA commercial uh, pilot certificate for drones, a remote pilot certificate, and then we put them through an, an additional 160 hours of remote pilot class. SABD tells me that they have 12 drones right now at their disposal, but really this could be the future of law enforcement. As technology progresses, as regulatory elements progress, it puts these uh, tools, uh, more of these tools in, in, in law enforcement's hands. As for Fiesta, well, if you see a drone overhead, that might just be a safety precaution. Fiesta, we are going to be deploying several of our drone teams at major Fiesta events, um, primarily used as crowd overwatch and traffic control. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. All right, so keep your eyes on the sky. You don't be surprised. That's right. Right now, 928, 56 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a look at our KSET Insider membership and the exclusive perks members are getting during Fiesta. Our membership producer will join us after the break to talk about the free program and how you can sign up. But before that, we're going to tell you about a program University Health is taking part in to help children who need reconstructive surgery. Having a cleft lip repair or having a cleft palate repair um, changes a child's life in a profound way. They're looked at differently, their social confidence is different, just their ability to interact socially is completely different. 
how you can sign up if your child or someone you know qualifies for these free procedures. It's not just for San Antonio families. We'll explain when we come back. 932 University Health teaming up with a nonprofit organization and hosting a surgery weekend to help change the lives of kids in our community. Tiffany Wet does explains how this pediatric reconstructive surgery could help in different ways. We're extending our reach all the way down to the border and to the valley. Um, and so any kid that can apply, we'll take a look at them. Local health care experts are ready to serve pediatric patients for a special surgery weekend. They're principally reconstructive surgeries, so scar revisions, cleft lip, cleft palate, anything like that. Um, but we will really not turn anyone away at this point. University Health is collaborating with Fresh Start Surgical Gifts to provide pediatric surgeries during the weekend of June 24th and 25th. This organization's been doing this in San Diego since 1991. Um, for the last several years, they've also been doing it in Chicago, and we're now their third site nationally. The special surgery weekend is for infants, children, and teens, and there is no cost to the patient or their families. For the first weekend, we're looking at trying to start with five procedures only, and we'll expand as time moves on. Um, but again, we'd really encourage people to apply, because maybe if we don't aren't able to get to kids this time around, then we'll start arranging our next weekend. Fresh Start Surgical Gifts is accepting applications Dr. Ian Mitchell says these surgeries will impact the patient in many ways. Having a cleft lip repair or having a cleft palate repair um, changes a child's life in a profound way. They're looked at differently, their social confidence is different, just their ability to interact socially is completely different. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with live cam. Starting cool, we're now at 56 degrees. Kind of a different kind of April, but maybe that'll be comfortable for the River Parade tonight, Justin. Well, considering we know that warm temperatures, hot temperatures are right around the corner, I haven't heard a lot of people complaining about this cool weather. It is, uh, it is kind of nice, and yes, the River Parade should be fantastic tonight. Temperatures in the 60s, not bad. We're not going to be sweating out there, that's for sure. I know we had some rough weather last week and over the weekend. We still were able to fit in some great Fiesta events. Taste in New Orleans. Take a look at this picture. Uh, the food, the food is so good there. Uh, I know that uh, went well as we got into Friday night. A lot of people are visiting Taste of New Orleans. And I think as we go forward, we're going to be able to fit some of these Fiesta events in around a pretty active forecast. Temperatures around the state right now, 55 in San Antonio. Look at the numbers out in West Texas, 46 in Midland, 44 in Amarillo, 44 in Lubbock. It is hard to believe it is April. And it's not just us. There's a large portion of the country that is dealing with cool weather. You got to go down to Miami to find any sort of warmth. 80 right now there, 78 in Orlando. And the pollen count is in. Molds are low. Oak is low. Pecan is low. I'm going to go ahead and declare oak season pretty much over with. Uh, we had one high count last week, but other than that, uh, it's pretty much gone away. And uh, that is more good news. Here's a look at our forecast for today. 57 at 11 o'clock, 60 noontime. 66 at 3 o'clock. We should top out around 67. It's a mostly cloudy day. There could be a few peaks of sun, but not much. And as we head into this evening, temperatures hold in the low 60s. Now, by the time we get to midnight and early tomorrow morning, rain does return to the forecast. And we could even see a few thunderstorms tomorrow. More on that forecast in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. It's been an eventful last few days in San Antonio with the start of Fiesta. And for one lucky KSAT insider, the days are feeling a little bit royal. That's right. Congratulations to Stacy Reyes. Last week, she was named the lucky KSAT insider who will ride in the Battle of Flowers Parade as a Fiesta Royal and get a $1,000 credit to Amos. There's more to look forward to during Fiesta if you're a member of the KSAT insiders. And here to tell us about that is membership producer Rocio Hernandez joining us live in the studio. Rosia, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on here. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to have you. Well, tell us what's in store for our KSAT Insider. Yeah, well, this year, uh, members of KSAT Insider are helping us document the Fiesta festivities by sharing photos and videos on KSAT Connect. And we've already had a lot of great submissions from you know the first few events of Fiesta. Um, and for those who are new to KSAT Connect, this is our shared social platform uh, with viewers and readers, and it's just a great platform for us to stay connected with the local community. If viewers at home are interested in becoming a KSAT Insider, what do they need to know? 
Well, KSAT Connect is a platform exclusive to our members, so you have to be a KSAT Insider to post and interact with posts. Um, and both KSAT Connect and KSAT Insider are completely free, so all you need to do is uh, have an email address to get signed up. So now you're a member. What do you do if you want to share a photo of your large Fiesta metal collection? How do our viewers go about doing that? Well, you can go to ksat.com slash insider, or you can also access KSAT Connect via our apps. I recommend using the KSAT Weather Authority app. That way you have just regular access to KSAT Connect. And then once you're on the KSAT Connect page, you will either sign into your existing KSAT Insider account or sign up. And after doing that, you click upload a pin, you select the content you want to share and where you want to share it. If you're sharing Fiesta photos, you'd share under the events and festivals channel. And then you hit upload. Yeah. I, I know this sounds like a lot. And here's the good news. A lot of you are already doing a lot of this. We right. just want you to be in the loop on, on everything that's happening with KSAT right. and all our parties. And this is not just Fiesta. This is year round. Right. Yes. That's correct. So, um, and we encourage you new know, photos, obviously, with weather. You hear it. Um, Justin just shared a KSAT Connect photo just now. So, it's, um, you know, it happens year round, year round where we share photos on air and in our articles on the website. Yeah, we'll be having that for the Pigskin Classic right. as well. Yeah, that's correct. But uh, I know you're looking forward to Fiesta again. Uh, yeah. You were very busy last year. Tell us what you're excited about this year. I think uh, mostly getting to know members. Obviously, it's that opportunity to meet them in person. So if you're a member and you're already planning to go to the party, I mean, please say hello. You know, I'd love to meet you in person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to see some fellow KSAT folks, too. <laughs> There's a lot of people we don't right. see because yes. of the right. shift that we're on. That, but we also like connecting with our viewers as well. Rocio, thank you so yes. much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so you. much for having me. Yeah, members of KSAT Insider this year also got first dibs on tickets to KSAT Fiesta parties. So if you want to ensure that you get the best seats at the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau parades next year, sign up today. All right. Again, Rocio, thank, yes, you. thank you. Time now is 939, 56 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Your 2023 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi everybody, I'm Ray Fayo, 74, Larry Kurt, the Ugly King, and I look forward to seeing all of you at Fiesta this year. Meet Larry Kurt, 2023's The Ugly King, El Ray Fayo. Witty and contagiously full of life, Larry is geared up and ready to take on the iconic role as the People's King for this year's festivities but he's no stranger to the Fiesta scene. I started in 1989 as a volunteer. My daughter has been the opportunity to be La Reina. I've held many positions with the Fiesta Commission, including the president. And this year, 2023, it culminates with me getting the opportunity to be the 2023 Ray Feo. The fun comes with the territory in being Fiesta royalty, but the underlying mission of serving as El Rey Feo, not lost on Larry Kirk. Being Ray Feo is the best opportunity to volunteer and raise funds for scholarships for worthy students in San Antonio and Bear County. I have 12 court members who helped me to raise funds along with the Dos Reyes, Dos Amigos initiative to raise over $500,000 for scholarships this year for worthy students. Every Ray Feo gets the opportunity to design portions of the traditional outfit, including their crown and cape. And this year's designs commemorate some of the most historic symbols of San Antonio. So my crown displays each of the important missions in San Antonio. We also have the San Antonio River displayed by these blue stones. We have a cactus for the Payaya Indians who founded San Antonio. We also have a canary for our Canary Islanders and a symbol of Juneteenth from the Juneteenth flag. Broidered at the bottom of the cape are each of the very important missiones of San Antonio. Larry Larry is ready for Fiesta Fun and has a message for all of his fans. San Antonio loves Fiesta and the Ray Feo loves San Antonio. Viva Fiesta. It's a tall order, but we're asking Justin Horn not only predict the weather for one parade, <laughs> but three. Yeah. Three yes. parades this week. Can we make it happen? <laughs> three big ones. And, you know, I was going through the models this morning trying to time out some of these fronts, and it's it's encouraging because we have rain chances, but it seems as though those rain chances work around 
the parades. And cautionary tale. Of course, it's an imperfect science. You right. guys sure. made a very good guess of things, though. Sure. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was busy over the weekend. We mm -hmm. know that. And we're just in that, that kind of time of year where we get some showers and storms. I think tomorrow's going to be fairly active, too. So let's first jump into the forecast. Let's jump into the forecast and first take a look outside. Uh, we've got cloudy skies right now, 55. It's still chilly out there. You know, uh, yesterday was close to some record territory when it comes to high temperatures and how cool they were. 58, Stinson 56, Kelly 56 at Randolph. We will warm up some today, about where we were yesterday, 60s for highs with a few peaks of sun. Northeasterly winds at about 6, east northeasterly winds at 6 there at Kelly, and north northeasterly winds at 10 at Randolph. 53 in Kerrville, it's 51 in Fredericksburg, 55 in Uvalde, 56 in Beeville. Does not feel like April out there. And we've got mid to upper 50s here around San Antonio right now. As you plan out your day, know that it's going to be cloudy for the first half of the day. And then we could see a few peaks of sun here and there. 67 at 4 o'clock, 67 at 5 o'clock. That's about as warm as we're going to get. And then down into the 60s tonight, 62 at 8 p.m., 61, 9 p.m. We start to see more of a southeasterly wind, though, at that point. In the satellite picture, well, it shows that uh, there are breaks here and there. Not a lot. We're noticing a few down in Wilson County, a few down I-37, but nothing here in San Antonio, at least at the moment. It's just cloudy. Here's a look at the forecast. And as uh, we time it out here, 4 o'clock today, not much going on. And I don't expect any rain today. So that means that the, the parade tonight should be just fine. But as we get into the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning, showers and drizzle do start to develop. So the Tuesday morning commute has a pretty high potential of being damp. And we want to let you know that. Uh, most of that's going to be light, but as we head into the afternoon, we could start to see some thunderstorms blossom. So this is 2 o'clock tomorrow. Notice we've got some storms starting to take shape. There's a 40% chance of seeing these scattered showers and storms. And then these will quickly, quickly push north and east. And it's at this point where I think the risk for severe weather is kind of at its highest, but it, it's moving away from us at this point. So. Uh, hopefully we miss out on some of the severe weather, but we do need to mention there's a potential for that tomorrow, especially late afternoon. And the Storm Protection Center has our northeastern counties within that scattered range and then more isolated as you go south and west. That includes San Antonio. Certainly something to watch tomorrow. Hail and gusty winds, probably the main threats as they usually are around here. And then as we look beyond that, uh, Wednesday is going to be a pretty nice day. But by the afternoon and evening hours and then into early Thursday, we'll start to see more showers and storms developing along on our first front. This is front number one, 40% chance for Wednesday night, Thursday morning. We clear out for Thursday and Friday, so that means Battle of the Flowers looks good. But then by late Friday night, we get another front coming through here, 30% chance of showers and storms. And then we clear out for Saturday, which means Flambeau looks good. That's what I was talking about, fitting these rain chances in. And really with these fronts, it makes temperatures pretty comfortable. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 40% chance of showers and storms tomorrow, 73. 83 Wednesday, 40% chance of storms late Wednesday, early Thursday, 79 on Thursday, cooler behind that first front. 84 Friday, we get that second front late Friday night, early Saturday morning, and then uh, turning cooler and windy on Saturday, 77 with low humidity. Guys. Justin, thank you. The Uvalde Police Department has a new assistant police chief after years without one. This comes nearly one year since the Robb Elementary School shooting. The newly hired assistant police chief tells our Lee Waldman that he'll work to rebuild the relationship between the community and the department. Well, my new title will be the Assistant Police Chief of Uvalde Police Department. It's a new chapter for Homer Delgado. He's leaving the Dilly Police Department where he's been the chief for several years to go to Uvalde. I've sat down with Core City Management and uh, the current police chief, Daniel Rodriguez, and we've discussed some of the ideas that we both have to improve the service of the police department, improve the trust of the community. Delgado comes with over 25 years of law enforcement experience. In that time, he's worked in nearly every division of law enforcement investigations. Tactical operations, hostage crisis negotiations. Um, I've, I've always been one of those people who, if there was an opportunity, I wanted to, to take it. That includes active shooter training. He's also a trainer for civilian response to active shooters. If there's a situation, um, if there's anything that I can do to make sure that people are safe, 
I will promise you that I will do it. The day of the Robb Elementary shooting last May, the Uvalde Police Chief Daniel Rodriguez was out of town. Lieutenant Mariana Vargas was the acting chief as the department didn't have an assistant chief to take the lead. Pargas has since left the department and faced major criticism for what some call the lack of action on May 24th. Delgado says with this new role, someone will always be around to take charge in any situation. If the chief has to go out of town, then I'll take control of the, the agency and make the decisions that need to be made. Following the shooting at Rob Delgado brought in over 500 police officers from across the state to help the community during their time of need. He says he's eager to be back, continuing to serve. To the community of Uvalde, I'm, I'm very excited to serve you. If there's anything you need, my door will always be open and I'll be available to you all 24-7. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And Delgado starts in Uvalde on May 8th. Time right now, 651, 56 degrees. We'll be right back. Fiesta continues this week with the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. This evening, it'll be from 7 to 9 p.m. along the San Antonio River. Can't make it to the parade in person. You can watch it right here on KSAT. David Sears and Myra Arthur will be hosting the parade broadcast along with Jonathan Cotto and Adam Kasky. You can watch it on TV or any of our digital platforms. All right, so because of tonight's parade, a couple of ABC programs will be shown at a different time. They will still air on KSAT, but you need to adjust your DVR. American Idol will be rebroadcast on KSAT tomorrow at 1.35 a.m. Cable subscribers may be able to watch it live on abc.com slash watch live. And The Good Doctor will air on Saturday at 2.05 a.m. We have all those details on our website. Just look at ksat.com. And right now at ksat.com, everything you need to know about Fiesta and events happening this week to scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you directly to the KSAT Fiesta homepage. You'll see the event schedules, parking info, and how you can watch all our parades. And don't forget to show us your pictures and videos from Fiesta by sharing them on KSAT Connect. Your pictures could be featured online or on air. Just open up the Weather Authority app or visit the KSAT Connect webpage. We have easy instructions online on how to submit your photos. Mm, there's going to be a lot of photos coming in, I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, 67 today, so it's still kind of a cool day. We've had a little bit of drizzle early. I think that generally goes away. And then mostly cloudy this afternoon. Should be good weather for the River Parade tonight. However, drizzle and showers start to kick in by early tomorrow morning. So the morning commute on Tuesday, a little damp, and there is a chance for some showers and storms throughout the day. A couple strong ones, too, generally uh, east of San Antonio, something we'll be watching tomorrow. A couple more chances there with a couple fronts Wednesday night and Thursday morning, and again Friday night. But, I guess I said, it looks like the parades come out and skate. Not bad. Yeah, I guess just the Fiesta hoodie tonight, though. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, guys.